on exciting application domain, would say rather new application domain for machine learning and data analytics, which is uh, optimal treatment uh, of cows. So the guest talk is titled Understanding Cows from Within. And uh, we are very happy to have Alexander Oberecker telling us about this cool application. Alexander is uh, leading the data science team and the software development at the Austrian company Smaxtech, which is specialized in animal care. Yeah, uh, thanks a lot, Alex, for yeah. giving this talk. Please take it away. Thank you very much uh, for, the, for the introduction. Uh, very warm welcome also from my side. Uh, thank you that I have the chance to uh, uh, have some very high motivated students uh, working with our data and also that I'm able to, to present uh, our company and our vision here today. Uh, as you said already in the beginning, uh, so understanding cows from within, this is basically uh, our credo here at SmackStack. Uh, so that's what we want to, uh, what's, what our ambition is and what we want to go to. And we are towarding this goal. Uh, uh, we are coming closer and closer. And machine learning, of course, is one of the uh, things we are using uh, to reach this goal. Good. Uh, from the agenda points, uh, so first of all, I would like to show you what we measure inside of the cows. Uh, then I will give you a short introduction on uh, Dairy 101. That's how we call it here at SmackStack. Uh, that's uh, the basic understanding how cows work. So every one of us here uh, at SmackStack has to know uh, a lot about cows so that we can apply, uh, so that we know how to work with the data and what uh, the use cases are. Uh, then I will show you the, the customer value. Uh, so what are we doing with the data so that someone uh, has uh, a gain from it. Uh, then I will give you the system architecture from a technical point of view. Uh, and then I will show you some examples where we already uh, have data science and machine learning uh, in place here at SmackStack. And I will give you a short introduction to the data set that you uh, can work with afterwards. Good. Yeah, from the measurement side. Uh, so what we do is uh, we measure with a bolus uh, that is put into the cow, the activity data, the temperature data, the pH value, and the rumination. So the activity uh, is basically uh, the sum of, the, so it's a 3D acceleration sensor uh, and what we measure or what we show to the customer here in the red line uh, is the sum of this 3D acceleration measurement uh, over 10 minutes. Then we have the temperature here uh, in the blue line, what you can see. So the body temperature, I think this is uh, quite obvious what this, what this means. Uh, then we have the pH value uh, measured inside the, the rumen. And we have as, a, as one of our newest features, uh, I think released 30 days ago, uh, we have the, the rumination of the cow. So um, how often the cow swallows up the food again is I will explain a little later uh, that cows are ruminants uh, for those who don't know. Good, so where do we measure? Uh, basically, uh, this is the, the gastric area of a cow and the gastric area of a cow is, is uh, divided into four parts, uh, nam namely the omasum, the rumen, the abomasum and the reticulum. And the reticulum is the place uh, where we uh, are situated. So basically the sensor is put into the cow 
and stays at the reticulum uh, a cow's lifetime, basically. Exactly. Good, but what is this cow doing all day? So as I told you before already, uh, cows are ruminants. So uh, they eat their grass, uh, the straw and whatever uh, is fed to the cow. And at some point in time, they swallow the, the food up again and chew it once more and once more and once more uh, until uh, it's digested. Uh, basically, the adults are polygastrics, uh, so have uh, the four uh, stomachs, as I explained before. The calves are born monogastric, so with only one. Uh, the four stomachs I explained already. Uh, for us, very important is uh, that there are different breeds for different production lines. So the one is uh, the dairy line. Uh, the dairy line is uh, made for, uh, for milk yield, uh, so for producing milk. And on the other hand, we have the beef line. Uh, so this is uh, for producing uh, meat. Uh, for us, very important is uh, at the moment only the dairy market. Uh, and very important to know, and a lot of people don't know this, that uh, like for humans, uh, a cow need to calve uh, in order to give milk. So without uh, giving birth, uh, the cow wouldn't milk, uh, wouldn't yield any milk. And just in short, the stages of a cow's life. So uh, after the calf is born from zero to nine months, one would say it's a calf. Uh, after nine months, we call it a heifer. Uh, so it's uh, until the first calf, as I mentioned before, in this phase, they give no milk. Uh, then we have the dry cow. So uh, after the calf, it's, it's lactating. And after some point in time, uh, it will be uh, dried off and doesn't uh, yield any milk anymore uh, until the next uh, calving. Two weeks before the parturition, it's a close-up cow. And uh, yeah, as I mentioned before, the lactating cow is the cow that uh, yields milk. And how does the lactation curve look like? So in the beginning, uh, one would say this is a very, very complicated uh, diagram, but uh, this is very crucial for uh, all of our data scientists to know uh, all of these things, uh, because just if you have the, the right context, uh, you can uh, make machine learning tools or other algorithms uh, be effective because you have to feed them the, the right features. And for example, uh, one of the most common features, and it's uh, also part in your, of your data set, is the daisy milk. And the daisy milk are basically uh, from the calving, uh, the days counted uh, until the next calving. And why is this important? Uh, for example, after the calving, the cows are very susceptible for diseases. So uh, one has to know if you, if you do health monitoring for this cow, uh, that even a smaller temperature increase or something like this uh, is something where you want to have a closer look uh, on the cow. Uh, and on the other hand, for example, it, it's probably not that important uh, or that the cow is not susceptible, so susceptible uh, for diseases uh, when she's pregnant and She's not producing that. So this is basically the, the milk yield curve after the calving. So the milk yield increases after the calving and after around 100 days or something like this, uh, it drops again. And so in this area, uh, there are less health issues because the cow is not uh, so, uh, producing so much milk anymore and it's uh, not suffering from the production of the milk every day. 
yeah, what else is important? Uh, after around 50 days of milk, uh, the breeding starts. So basically, um, if you want to get the cow pregnant again, uh, yeah, so you want to get the cow pregnant again, because uh, otherwise after at around this point, uh, the cow wouldn't give, uh, wouldn't yield any milk anymore. And uh, a cow without milk is, uh, yeah, it's, it's useless for the farmer. Let's say it like this. Uh, yeah, so at around day 50, uh, you want to detect uh, the heat of the cow. So heat detection. Um, and you want to inseminate the cow so that the cow gets pregnant again. Yeah, this is a very complicated diagram. One could talk probably 30 more minutes about this, uh, but if you are interested, uh, you can have a look on that uh, later by yourselves. Um, and I will just go on. Uh, housing systems for dairy cows, uh, we at SmackStack so we in Austria, most of the time we have the uh, free stall housing system. Uh, yeah, you might ask. So on the on the other hand, for example, in Ireland, a lot of the cows uh, are going to the pasture every day. Uh, so yeah, why is this important for us? Uh, it's important because the activity signal here uh, you can see the activity signal of a cow that goes to the pasture every day. This is very uh, periodically. So you see, okay, here in the morning, uh, the cows get milked. So they have to go to the barn and you see very high activity. And uh, the same is valid for the afternoon, the second uh, milk of the day. Uh, there is a lot of activity going up here. And on the other hand, uh, that's the, the activity curve uh, of a cow that is in the barn. Uh, there is not so much activity uh, and it doesn't vary uh, so much. And as well, what you can see here is uh, the drinking cycles of a cow. So if a cow drinks, the cold water is uh, put onto our sensor and you can see a temperature drop here. And what you can see here, if you compare these two graphs again, uh, you can see that um, cows that are out on the pasture, uh, probably the, the watering place uh, is really far away. So the cow drinks only once or twice a day, but this is still normal whereby you can see here that a cow in the store in the in the barn uh, drinks like five, six, seven, eight times, but uh, a little less uh, amount at once. Uh, yeah, if you have any questions, you can raise them anytime. Uh, yeah, just to say. Um, yeah, there was one question. Uh, these uh, yeah, overages yeah. are they are they computed blockwise or on on rolling windows? Uh, which averages? I think the the acceleration measurements, the activity signal. Uh, it's uh, in ten minutes block, so it's it's the sum of ten minutes basically. Yeah. Then another question: How how does the sensor stay in the cow? Is it fixed? Does it not oh. easily? get out of the system. So it's, it's just because of the weight of the sensor. Uh, it just uh, sinks down and it stays there. Yeah. Sometimes we have the problem that, uh, especially in the beginning, uh, it moves to a different place of the, of the rumen. Uh, but I will come to that later why this is a problem for us. Um, but it basically, basically stays here. Uh, uh, because of the size of the sensor and because of the of the weight of the sensor. Mm -hmm. Then re regarding the curves that you just showed, so what is the difference between the red and blue curves again? The blue curve is the, the temperature and the red curve is the activity. Okay. 
And this is the activity of, uh, of a cow that is on the pasture. So that goes out on the pasture every day and they stay there and just come back to the stall uh, or to the barn uh, when they get milked. And here you can see the activity pattern of a uh, cow that is only in the, in the barn. So what you can see here in the spikes is uh, the moving from the pasture back to the barn. Good. Some additional questions? No, thanks. Okay, good. Good. Uh, so one of the main focuses of your data set is uh, the pH value that we measure with our sensor. Uh, the pH measurement is uh, a more expensive one than the, than the temperature and the activity. Uh, so we usually put the pH sensors just in a, a group of uh, the animals. Uh, so in like five to 10%. Uh, because the only thing where the pH is really relevant is uh, to steer feeding. And what you can see here is the ideal uh, pH curve of a cow uh, within one day. So basically uh, you start here with the feeding and after the feeding, uh, the microbiotics in the, in the uh, gastric area of the cow uh, they start to digest the, the, the straw or the grass or whatever you fed to the, to the cow. And they produce a lot of acid in there. And that's the reason why the pH uh, decreases there. Uh, and after the second feeding, the same thing uh, happens again. But uh, due to the ruminating and, and uh, all the stuff, so the cow is able uh, to regulate itself. So uh, if, if you have a phase of no feeding, the pH will increase again, and uh, we will get to a level where we want to have it. And the goals that you have uh, is, uh, the, so the first goal is uh, you, want, uh, you want to have uh, a daily mean that is in a certain range. So here it's drawn with a 5.8 to 6.1 pH value. And uh, on the other hand side, you want to have a, a stable uh, pH value. So you want to have a low daily amplitude. Because if, uh, if you have a high daily amplitude, uh, the microbiotics in the cow uh, will die after some time. And if the microbiotics of the cow uh, is not in a good condition, uh, the cow is suffering from that and will die as well. So you want to have a low daily amplitude and uh, a, a stable daily mean at a certain level. Yeah, exactly. Here it says uh, creation of optimal conditions. It's uh, crucial for the ruminal microbiotics. Uh, to increase uh, the productivity of the animals. There was one question. How is the sensor recharged? Is it battery driven? Yeah, it's battery driven and it's not recharged. So we have a lot of uh, improvements on the sensor side that we uh, use as less power as possible. So for example, we are just sending every hour uh, and of course the sensor, the firmware and the hardware has to be very performant. But this is a big topic for us, of course, yes. So we are, we are doing a lot of research and putting a lot of effort in, uh, in order to be able to stay alive with one sensor for a cow's lifetime. And do you know about side effects uh, caused by the sensors to the cows? No. Like allergic reactions? No, not that we know for now. And we, we put in a lot of sensors already, uh, but there is no allergical reactions. And it's also, um, uh, I don't know the English term, uh, Verträglichkeitsprüfung. 
I don't so it's know checked by the healthcare know. authorities or veterinarian authorities. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So they they checked the sensor and they said uh, everything is okay. You can put it inside the the room. And, but this is actually also a big topic for us. We want to, of course, get sure that uh, we don't harm the animals, and that's one of our major goals. And uh, as we sit right now, this nothing nothing happened. So. Um, Basically, the, the good thing is, if something would harm the cow, we would measure it immediately. <laughs> so if you have like uh, inflammation reaction or, or something like this, you would immediately see a temperature increase after insertion. Uh, but this is not the case. Is that okay? Some further questions or? No, thanks a lot. Good. Yeah, and then uh, the rumen. Uh, so if you if you are too low with the pH value uh, because your feeding is wrong, uh, you can go into an acidosis of the cow, and this is actually a serious production disease. Uh, it reduces the milk yield, uh, and the reason is most of the times a reduced feed efficiency. And uh, yeah, that's exactly what the farmer doesn't want to know, uh, want to have. Uh, and the cow doesn't want to have as well. So if you control the pH value, it's actually a win-win situation for uh, both of the partners, for the farmer on the one side and for the cow on the other side. Uh, there is no exact definition when you uh, speak about uh, acidosis. Uh, how long does a cow have to stay under a critical pH limit? What is the critical pH limit? Uh, this is uh, still under research and uh, there is some uh, rule of thumbs uh, where you want to have it. It's between 6.2 and 7.2. 7 this is said to be normal. Uh, between 5.8 and 6.2, it's a critical range already. Between 5.5 and 5.8, uh, you speak from a super crude uh, rumen acidosis, uh, Sara. Uh, and if you go below, it's really acute and it does harm the, the animal a lot. Uh, but the exact value is not always the most important thing. As I said before, it's also really important uh, that the, the uh, daily amplitude is not getting too high. Yeah, I think I said most of these things. Uh, yeah, avoid massive drop of pH. Uh, it, the, the pH varies a little bit from day to day. Uh, so you don't want to have punctual measuring. Uh, but instead, uh, you want to have what we offer, basically, namely a 10 minutes uh, measuring. Exactly. Good. But what is the customer value out of that? From the pH side, I told you already the customer value. So you can uh, steer your, you can do your feeding management uh, over it. Uh, but uh, yeah, there are also other things. And uh, one of the things that we can uh, give as a customer value is uh, calving detection. So around, I think it's 15 to 18 hours uh, most of the time. Uh, so in the, in the mean, I think, uh, we can predict the calving of the cow by uh, detecting a temperature decrease uh, 15 to 18 hours in front of the calving. So we detected the calving, the, the imminent calving uh, here. And most of the times the real calving is happening here. So the farmer can already uh, prepare the cow and uh, have a closer eye on that cow because uh, of course the calving is uh, always uh, a crucial part of the cow's uh, life cycle uh, and you want to obso observe these cows uh, very well. Very often they are also put into a different uh, barn in this time. Uh, 
Uh, the other thing I already mentioned uh, beforehand already. Uh, so you, in order to, to let your cows uh, produce milk, you have to get them pregnant again. And you can, so we, we provide the farmer with uh, a heat detection. Uh, you can see it here very well. Uh, the cow has a, a significant activity increase uh, while, the, while, while the cow is in heat. So ready for insemination basically. Uh, and you would, so we, we recommend the farmer to uh, inseminate the cow I think it's around 12 hours before we detect the, the heat. And that's again uh, what I wanted to say beforehand with the example between pasture and barn. Uh, here it's the barn again. You have a very low activity normally. And at the heat, you can see it very well. But if the cows move uh, twice a day, uh, it's a different challenge for us. Uh, to detect heats and don't have too many false positive on, on the other hand, uh, because the cow is just going to the to the pasture, uh, to the to the milking parlor. Good. Then uh, of course one of our major goals uh, that we set for for us as a company is uh, we want to make cows healthier. And one of the most common health issues is uh, milk fever. Uh, the reason is most of the time a, a calcium deficit in the body, uh, which occurs very often uh, after the calving. So again, you can see here uh, indication of imminent calving and around 24 hours later, we have again a temperature decrease. And in this case, this is not uh, because of the of the calving, but it's because of the, the milk fever disease. So this is also quite challenging, uh, separating this imminent calving uh, from the health issue, uh, milk fever. And you can see here also uh, that after that, the cow was drinking uh, a lot less than beforehand. So we also threw, okay, there is something wrong with the, with the drinking cycles. There's one question uh, on the uh, impact of activity on the milk production. Did you study how important the activity levels are or how relevant activity levels of cows are for uh, as a predictive indicator for the milk production? Uh, actually, we, we didn't do a research as we don't have too much uh, milk in as a milk yield data at the moment. Um, but I don't think there is a correlation between the activity as we provided here uh, and the, the milk yield, so the amount of the milk yield, but uh, it, it correlates with the, with the rumination and it correlates with health issues. So if you have a, a disease uh, and the cow is suffering from that disease, uh, you will always have a drop in the, in the milk yield. So there's a high correlation uh, of the well-being of a cow and uh, the milk production of a cow. And yeah, so one related question, how, how do you get this uh, diagnosis of the diseases? Because this is not something that is directly in the sensor data. So this you must get from a veterinarian. Uh, exactly. So uh, this is annotated data. So we don't at the moment, and that's one of our major goals in the future that we can put something like, oh, here there is uh, milk fever. Uh, but we are quite far away from that because uh, it's always hard to say just from sensor data, uh, this is really milk fever. But uh, if you have several factors combined together, and that's actually the, the, the key uh, to, to a diagnosis, if you have multiple factors, namely the, the temperature decrease, uh, a lower uh, amount of uh, of water intake. And you can see here uh, activity decrease as well. 
uh, then you can probably say to a certain probability, uh, this is milk fever. And of course, uh, the closeness to the calving. So you can say, okay, uh, there is probably somewhere a Gaussian distribution uh, of milk fever cases uh, after the, the calving of the cow. So if you take all these factors into consideration, uh, you could, uh, yeah, diagnosis is, is always a little dangerous, um, also from a law perspective probably, uh, but you can uh, probably classify it as uh, milk fever uh, if you take all these factors into consideration. But this is basically one of the main things that we uh, want to work uh, on in the in the next in the closer future. Okay. Good. Yeah. Uh, one more example. This is uh, mastitis. So this is uh, in, an inflammation of the other. Uh, you can see it here in the temperature increases. Uh, so the reaction of this cow is, is quite high. Uh, the reason there is uh, bacteria that are in the in the other of the of the cow. And again, this, uh, as I mentioned it already before, uh, this is a, a huge impact on the cow and a huge impact on the on the milk production of the cow. Because basically you have, uh, if you have this disease, you have to throw away the milk of this cow uh, because this milk is not uh, cell label uh, if you have uh, too many of these bacteria in the, in the milk. Exactly. And yeah, the treatment, uh, you treat it with, with antibiotics. And the thing is uh, with the temperature measurement, we are really early in the detection of the mastitis. And the sooner you detect the disease, uh, the less uh, antibiotics you will have to use. And the earlier the cow will recover again. And yeah, you have to throw away less milk. Again, win-win uh, situation for the farmer uh, as well uh, as for the cow. Good, uh, then I have um, examples of uh, pH value. You can see here uh, it's at around, I think 6.5. So it's, it's, yeah, it's quite high, but this, this cow is really okay. So the feeding management is really good here. Uh, you, you don't see any uh, high amplitudes over the day. Uh, so this looks very good actually. And on the other hand side, you see what happens uh, if you feed a cow only every second day. Uh, so you have the feeding here, the cow eats a lot, uh, the bacteria uh, digest a lot and produce a lot of acid. So the pH value goes uh, really steep down and into an area where you don't want to have it. And the daily amplitude is really, is really high. So the, the microbiotic uh, climate in this cow uh, is really bad, actually. And you can see it here. This is the event for uh, the SARA that I discussed beforehand. So the acidosis. Here you are under the, the critical limit of the 5.8 uh, for too long. Alex, there, there was another question. How much uh, does the, the species of the cow change these this relations between the, the different parameters and diagnosis? So what you now told us about these findings and relations, is this only for a certain species of cow or is this? Yeah, it, it, the race always does have an influence. Uh, so for example, there are races that are uh, known for having a really high milk yield, for example. So uh, this is also something you have to take into consideration because if you have a high milk yield, uh, the normal temperature of a cow is uh, also increasing, for example. And uh, that's why we don't say just, okay, uh, it's 41 degrees, so we have to put a temperature increase. 
uh, but you also have to say, okay, what is the normal temperature of this cow? Uh, and does it have an increased value at the moment? So that we have an algorithm that works uh, generalized over races. So we always have to take that into consideration, but the basics are the same. So uh, this is not good uh, for any race. Good, yeah. And then in the end, uh, this is how we display it in, the, uh, in our app on the right side uh, and in the, the web messenger on the left side. So the farmers uh, can see 